What is a Geiger counter? First developed in 1928 by doctors Geiger and Mueller, the Geiger counter was a device designed to determine whether or not an object was radioactive and emitting radiation, and to potentially count and determine how radioactive an object was. This rock we have determined to be radioactive using a Geiger counter. This rock does not appear to be radioactive. The Geiger counter has performed its most basic function. The basic function of a Geiger counter is incredibly simple. There is a gas-filled tube with low pressure. Electrical voltage is applied to one end, and on the other end, there is a ground. The electricity wishes to flow across, but it cannot do so because the gas by itself is non-conductive. When radiation, for example, the cesium-137 source, approaches the tube, the high energy particles entering the tube slam into the electrons in the gas. The electrons are discharged and knocked free, and they're pulled by the electromagnetic gradient, that is, the electrical field that makes the particles all want to move from one side to the other. They want to move from here, where the energy comes in, to here, where the energy leaves. As they are pulled across, they dislodge other electrons, creating an avalanche. That avalanche flies from one side to the other, and is an electrical pulse, which is recorded by the instrument. This meter shows counts per minute, but the reality is it's actually voltage. Voltage. Every single time you see a pulse, it is voltage. The counts per minute or energy or whatever unit that's been displayed on the actual uh, dial has just been calibrated. Nearly 20 years before Geiger counters were invented, a device was designed in order to detect alpha particles. It is ironic that Geiger counters often cannot detect alpha particles. For example, the alpha particles coming from this polonium-210 sample. The reason is the Geiger counter itself blocks most of the alpha particles from getting to the in internal detector. For this purpose, some Geiger counters have been designed with these very thin membranes which allow alpha particles to penetrate deep into the Geiger counter but do not allow the gas that is inside to escape. There is a metal grate over the front of this uh, unit to prevent somebody like me touching it from damaging it. Let's test the polonium-210 sample and see if we get a better result. It is a weak sample, but as you can see, we can certainly detect it. Geiger counters can also detect beta radiation. For example, the beta radiation from this strontium-90 sample is easily detected. Beta is one of the easiest forms of radiation for a Geiger counter to detect. Geiger counters can detect gamma radiation. For example, the gamma rays coming from the cesium-137 sample are readily detected. There are many uses of Geiger counters. For example, testing your dinner plates and other household items to see if they're radioactive. This plate certainly is radioactive. checking your rock collection to see if it's radioactive, which can be important, especially since rock samples can be radioactive. Or even checking household granite to make sure that it's safe before purchasing it.
What Geiger counters are not good at doing is testing for trace radiation and contamination in food, where the Geiger counter is simply not sensitive enough, even if there were contaminants. For something like this, you need a more specialized, more powerful detector. Geiger counters are also not very good at telling the difference between two radionuclides. They can tell me that both of these two are radioactive. They can give me some indication of the type of radiation I'm detecting. But what they cannot do is tell me which one of these two is cesium-137 and which one of these two is cobalt-60. I would need a different piece of equipment to determine that. The purpose of a Geiger counter is to determine whether or not something is radioactive, and if so, how radioactive is it? This is incredibly useful to fields such as physics, nuclear physics, radiation safety, law enforcement, first responders, fire departments, military hospitals, radiology, and even to the average citizen. That is why the Geiger counter has been, and will probably continue to be, one of the most useful tools in the laboratory for the last 100 years, and who knows how many to come.